Hi everyone, so I'm going to talk about colour changes in lower cards and focusing on xanthism or gold coloration. We've been meaning to talk about this for a while and it's very sort of popular and I don't see it ever not being popular. These fishes that turn gold or are more gold in coloration. It's very much like in house plants where uh, plants that show variegation reach a lot higher prices than ones that don't. Um, so it's very similar in stability but you can't, if nothing you can do in fishes to maintain that coloration. So generally there's several different types of changes in coloration that the fishes might have. So there might be rapid changes due to stress or light exposure, you might see the fish getting patchy. Um, so it might have subtle lighter coloration or it might have um, subtle patches of lighter coloration. Most drastic I've seen is probably in situation of nunculus with white patches that almost look like columnars and they go, go pretty quickly once the fish has come down. Usually this is when you uh, bag it up or something like that or the fish is not doing well at all and that's when you do see stress coloration as well. Another one is deeper water. Uh, fishes. So when the Panax, especially Panax bathyphilus, is brought up from deep water, it displays almost no pigmentation. And I don't think I've seen this particularly in other genera of lower cards or plecos. Um, but I have seen it in gymnotiform. So gymnotiform is the South American knife fishes. Um, these are electric fishes and they are sister, possibly sister, to siluriforms which is catfishes that includes plex. Um, and these fishes, uh, I've seen it where when the lights were out it started to lose pigmentation quite rapidly. And like the deep water fishes, once it into lighter areas, they st really rapidly lose that light colouration or lack of pigmentation and become a lot darker. So definitely, you will see photos of uh, Panak bathyphilus especially, maybe Panak shafari, um, I'm not entirely sure, being brought up from, and they show this lack of coloration, they look absolutely stunning. But also seen changing in patterns, so Pseudonsitrus acerini changing from a um, spotted, which is the more normal spotted coloration, which they look very much like the gold nugget parent, um, Bone stitches, um, Xanthellus, but they're a lot more depressed in the fact they have a sort of flatter body shape. And I've seen it where they, so they, instead of a spotted coloration, they have sort of bean sort of shapes, very much like Teoplicthes josimanus, which is LRO1 or the gold spot pleco. Uh, and that was quite interesting, and it also showed it, um, it was also before they started to revert back, which was very rapidly, and only one went back to that weird coloration slightly before going back to normal spotted. They also showed xanthic um, coloration. And it was very rapid, the changes. They didn't last long in that sort of very bright color. First, I'll talk about aging. As the fish ages, it will change coloration. Seams will be lost, most likely. So these are on dorsal fin, caudal fin, Stuff like that where you see that band of coloration that will likely fade or go with time. With aging they might they generally will any fish that have seams that will likely fade that is seen in many species in the juvenile stage they will likely fade but not always um, as this is Dolichopateris is usually quite good at holding it but might not. Spots might get smaller or disappear um, the vividness of the colour might go and it will more fade um, that's just a sort of summary of as the fish ages they do change a lot in coloration and sort of any patterns might become more intricate, more reticulated but they will also become a little bit more blurred. Next one I have never seen in any fishes but I know it occurs in other animals and there's no reason it wouldn't. So I'm just going to lump two together anyway. Um, so this is chimerism and mosaicism. So this is related to a few different things and if I explain it, it's going to be really poorly done. But you can see it in cats, you can see it in people. The cats are really obvious. Um, I think it's mosaicism is the more, what's it, chimerism is the one I've seen the most. So where you see that a cat with uh, two different 
vastly different colours on either side of the head. So now I'm going to talk about um, changing colour. And first I'm just going to mention melanism. Melanism I have seen once in Paranthesis of Antiochus. Interesting the fish also displayed um, xanthism and will look like some sort of viral wart growth. Um, and I, it might have always had that um, melanism and I'm going to have to look back at the photos and I, I only remember seeing it but never tracked whether it changed or not. I'd assume it would like the xanthism and this fish sort of, it sort of went to and from the xanthism but preferred the darker end so not being xanthic and having just small regions of xanthic but more melanistic. Um, I'm explaining really badly. So now is the main focus and I'm going to talk about xanthism. So this is the one that everyone is, well loads of people adore and are really interested and also the colouration is quite vivid. So the first one I'm going to talk about is, so Hypostomus lutis. Um, I can't, xanthism is really difficult to say with when it comes to so this species is darker with white spotting as a um, juvenile and then as it ages it might turn to more gold coloration as it goes from um, through different phases so when it comes to this species it the changes are more permanent I've not seen them revert back from the gold unlike the two others I'm going to mention and it does change, you can get difference in intensity and this is generally due to locality. The next one is, so it's a really gorgeous species, just the body shape. So parents is just around the acres displays this and this is the only time I think I've seen what I would say is this type and I'm kind of categorising these three xanthic colourations uh, myself. Um, and this is sort of a slow solid coloration changes and you'll get what I mean by solid when you see the next one and this is back and forth but it's very slow over a series of months months really um, and this makes it quite easy to track individuals um, some seem to have a more stronger deposition to being one coloration than another so being more gold to being more darker and it kind of it moves very slowly like spreading around and back and yeah <laughs> that's how the easiest way to say it so the next one is more rapid changes and this seems to be very i would say even over days you can actually see it change um between different days not like you can watch it and the generally this is more dusky um coloration of gold where there's a lot of melanin so mixed in so darker coloration it might still show spotting or markings um, and it comes quickly and goes as quickly as it comes and it generally doesn't seem to reoccur as easily I've seen it in many different species so one thing I'll talk about later is Paranthesis or Antiochus um, and more detail about it but I've seen it in Spectrocanthicus, uh, Baryoncistrus, uh, oh no, Hypencistrus, uh, um, obviously Pseudoncistrus. There's a lot more unstable, I'd say. Um, I think it does, it, I have seen it also affect the health of the fish. With this, uh, it's very similar actually to something I saw, or I, I noted in Corridoras for like, four five years that corridors that suddenly just go lose all their pigmentation and they usually don't last long um last long off during or after it I've seen it in most the um corridors anius which is the bronze curry i think i might have i have seen it in uh, corridors pygmaeus which it lasted quite a lot longer um as in the fish it didn't have any pigmentation but it lasted a longer time I don't, don't think it actually passed um, 
But I have actually, going back to the old cards, I've seen photos of it in um, Hypopotomine, but I don't think we were, anyone was able to work out species, or maybe they were, maybe it was an autosynchronous. But it's sort of quite rapid and erratic, so it kind of comes and goes. Um, so especially if you see a fish that's like is that dusky coloration and gold, I wouldn't buy it if there's a higher price tag. There's one sort of coloration change that I have seen, and I would say it's more similar to that slow solid change, and that is in Pseudocanthus. Pirara, Patanga, LO24, LO25, um, which is the, one of the cactus plecos, um, which was shown more similar to Palancistris or uh, gold coloration than it was to the um, other types, and it's a lot more slow and it holds a lot better. So, there's several species it's worth talking of note about, Paranthistrus orantiacus being the main one because this gets confused with other species so easily. Paranthistrus orantiacus um, is a wide bodied, moderately deep, uh, well, probably I would say actually a little bit more flat bodied. It's quite a hefty fish and it commonly gets confused with another species. And the main difference I'd say is. As long as you could trust the seller, Perrin and Cistrus orantiacus should be around the sort of 200 to 350. I'm going to say at the top end uh, price tag. Apart from breeders, might do, breeders will do it for well less. Let's say I'm not going to list prices. Um, the Perrin Cistrus af orantiacus. This one doesn't change to gold like that other species it will have that more it might very unlikely very 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 unlikely um, have that more rapid um, gold coloration that comes and goes and then it's a little bit more dusky and this species is you pay about sort of 20 to 30 pounds for it doesn't really seem to have that sort of real genetic deposition to that gold coloration um, and yeah I'm putting difference on hopefully on the screen because it's not the most obvious and I'd like people if they saw it and knew just because it's almost like getting caught out you're buying something you're thinking you're getting something else and God forbid someone pays more um, for the wrong one. I know f expense in fish could be controversial, people spending that amount of money. But there is a difference, and there I can recommend. I don't know. I can. I know. I can always help people identify the difference, um, and also other people can. And also there are breeders around, I, I know of at least two. Um, Hypos um, so Hypossimus lutus is going to be the last species to talk about. Great species, hardy, uh, fine out wide range of temperatures, prefers about sort of 25-24, um, very active, very easy to feed. And the gold coloration, the price is dropping, um, it was quite high. Um, and it is a beautiful fish. Um, there are other um, hypospomus that do show gold coloration. I just can't think of. There's one with a J, I think, and I can't think of it off the top of my head. I'm not sure whether they do sort of change at the same rate. And obviously, um, other taxa of Corridor and they do show changes in gold coloration. So I'm um, losing my uh, voice a little bit. So there's theories behind it, and I'm not going to go into too much detail. So if you read the Journal of Catfish Study Group, um, it's worth there is an article on this. So the theory brought up here is a genetic deposition to colour changing by a defect in the humoral system, which is the pituitary, um, part of it is the pituitary gland, and it's a recessive trait and this coloration is triggered by an unrelated sti stimuli 
So this is more of a genetic basis that is causing this coloration. And another theory is that it could be viral. So quite an interesting thing in other animals is that pigmentation changes can be caused by a virus. So viruses can target certain cells and cause them to not function normally. Um, you also have autoimmune responses. So first I'll go, so the virus might be targeting these particular cells. Um, the pigmentation cells preventing the or changing how they function. Uh, you see it in plants, especially with um, st some plants that show certain variegation. Um, I'm not going to talk about. Um, I'm not really sure how it, uh, like occurs in aroids. Um, and also, uh, when it comes to viruses, the second thing is generally actually. Many stimuli can cause an autoimmune response. This is where the uh, the body itself, so the fish, fish's immune system will then start targeting its own cells and damage certain ones. But for it to be an autoimmune response, it's very much, it's pretty much similar in most of the fishes in the fact that the um, autoimmune responses in theory wouldn't all be doing one single thing. So that's just a theory, anyway. Um, I'll be interested in people's comments. It's quite a heavy topic and it's quite a long topic. Um, especially, I'm not gonna, I won't uh, go into the sort of physiology of pigmentation cells, it's not my sort of thing. Um, but anyway, thank you for watching. If you like my uh, videos, please comment, subscribe, whatever. Um, hopefully the video just gives food for thought, something to think about and something different. Anyway, thank you.